Hi, my name is Erin Dilly, and I'm playing Belle in Beauty and the Beast. And Belle is, is the heroine of the story. I want adventure in the great wide somewhere. I want it more than I can tell. Hi, my name is Roger Beffler, and I play the Beast. At the beginning, he's a prince, but he's spoiled, selfish, unkind. Um, so he's transformed into the beast. If I can't love her, then who? My name is Barbara Marino. I play Mrs. Potts. Uh, Mrs. Potts is the mother figure in the piece. Don't you like a nice water tea, sir? In a world you must be too tight. Oh, yes, please. No, no tea. You'll be here all night. I'm Susan Owen, and I understudy the role of Belle, and I'm also in the ensemble of Beauty and the Beast. And I play a servant in the castle who has been turned into a broom because of a spell. Hi, I'm Carol Bentley. I play ensemble here in the cast of Beauty and the Beast. I play a number of different roles, including uh, I'm one of the townspeople. I play a wolf, and I am also in the spectacular Be Our Guest number, I play the center plate. And I'm David Andrews. It's a tale as old as time. Disney's Beauty and the Beast. It has transformed Broadway, and tonight it will transform Lansing. We came down here to Florida's Tampa Bay Performing Arts Center to give you a behind-the-scenes look at this spectacular production. The elaborate costume designs, set changes, pyrotechnics that make this an amazing production. So stay tuned right there for the magic and myth of Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Won't you? be our guest. Much of the magic and myth of Disney's Beauty and the Beast is the constant changing of sets in and out and the special effects that make this an enormous, seamless production. Let's take a look now behind the scenes of Disney's Beauty and the Beast. This is the cottage. It's uh, one of the actually uh, few pieces or the many pieces that come on stage for the uh, settings, different settings on stage. Um, for those of you that haven't seen the show yet, uh, we try and transition the entire show in front of the audience, no blackouts. Right now, Beauty and the Beast is the biggest traveling Broadway show in the country, bigger than Miss Saigon and even Phantom of the Opera. Jeff Vaughn is one of those in charge of the beauty of what goes on backstage. It takes 32 uh, semi-trailers, 48 feet long, to move this from uh, city to city. 16 of those trailers arrive one week before the actual production begins, so the crew can begin setting up duplicates of some of the more massive set pieces. And once in place, that's where the backstage magic is done with the help of 100 chain motors. Just about everything you see going on and off stage is hung in the air so that we can move backstage freely because we have uh, 38 people backstage and it gets kind of crowded. Besides the motors in the air, Jeff says there are also some important ones located in the stage floor. And, and they're all automated, running off computers, running to an electrical motor in here. This is called a knife. Okay. This is called a dog in here. And you would knife a set piece into this dog, and the motor would go to a preset position and speed from the computer. Those computer-driven motors allow up to six set pieces to move at once. And it's just a matter of making sure everybody's safe. It's a lot of times you get all this stuff moving, and if something stops, you got to be there to make sure something else isn't going to crash into it or uh, someone isn't going to be coming off and running into a set piece that's not moving correctly. And... Safety is also a big concern when it comes to the show's pyrotechnics. Mike Diaberly is in charge of that. 
At each new location, his first job is to hook up with the local fire marshal. And I set off each one of the effects for him. And if they something that they don't quite like, we'll adjust it a little and make them happy. And also around the stage, I have fire extinguishers and fire blankets. And then they issue us the permit. And um, it's pretty simple, actually. One of the very first special effects you'll see is right at the beginning of Beauty and the Beast, when the Enchantress turns the prince into a beast. Transform. This is a, what we call the Enchantress Flame Ball, okay. an Enchantress Glove. Uh, it's basically a fiber silica glove with an aluminum patch to act as a heat sink that the match sits on that the Enchantress wears okay. to throw the Flame Ball at the beginning of the show. And she has a magnesium ball that sits on top of the glove, which she will grasp. The ball burns at about 1,800 degrees. So this works to deflect the heat okay. away from her hand and keep her safe as she throws the ball. And that puts off one heck of a light show. One heck of a light show, yes. Transform. From that opening blast to champagne showers and flaming torches, there are 16 different pyro effects in the show. One of the most often seen is when character Lumiere lights his candles. Something I got to try out. And it, it's pretty simple, but it, it works by flipping that this, switch. this switch under here, if I can do it, and then knocking it up like that. And that's and he does this throughout the show. Yes. So he's, this is, kind of, for me, just to do it there took me a little bit. But this is almost choreography. Yes, it is. Uh, it's all choreographed. Every hand is uh, fitted to the actor's hand. Right. So he, it becomes second nature to flip the switch and hit the buttons. For Mike, this is an illuminating labor of love. Yeah, it feels really good to watch it go off and have a good show every night. And uh, but it really is, you know, works as a team. It's a great crew and great cast to work with here. The costumes of Beauty and the Beast are incredibly intricate. And coming up next, we'll show you this tremendous costume collection. Don't go away. I am the wardrobe supervisor for the National Tour of Beauty and the Beast, and my job is to maintain the costumes so they look exactly today for tonight's performance as they looked three years ago when we opened in Minneapolis. Bobby Langhofer is the warden oh. of wardrobe oh. for Beauty and the Beast. She heads up a five-person team that will take on some local flair while at the Wharton Center. We hire 11 local people. Uh, there will be 11 dressers We're, uh, from the East Lansing area that we hire to help change costumes and also do maintenance during the day. From fork hats to spinning plates, Beauty and the Beast has tested Bobby's talents beyond a needle and thread. I feel uh, almost as comfortable with a, a hot gun and a glue gun uh, and hammer and nails as I do with a sewing machine now. It's almost, uh, some of the things verge on the prop side. And this is a special object. This is the um, spatula, an old-fashioned like metal spatula, the way it was cut out. Sometimes we call it the fly swatter, but we really endearingly call it the NBC peacock. Bobby says plastics also play a unique part in this production. Okay, the inside plastic here has been molded to the nose and the forehead of the dancer so that when it goes on their face, they're able to have it right close up to their face and they can really move well without it falling around or interrupting their, their eyesight. Whether it's a fork, a spoon, or a plate, the weight of the dinnerware is also taken into consideration with body-forming backpacks. And in the back of this, we can slide objects. The weight of the object, be it a knife, a fork, a spoon, a cake server, something like that, is more evenly distributed across the shoulders and down through their back, so there's less likelihood of injury, plus they can do a little more intricate uh, choreography without things falling off. And in most every costume design, there are hearts weaving through the love story theme of Beauty and the Beast. And you see there are stenciled hearts on the bottom of the dress. There are beaded hearts around the top little um, de decoration here. 
The audience probably doesn't get to see this up close and personal, but there are beaded hearts on their garters. The flamboyant fabric of this production is summed up in two very special costumes. Um, this is that famous yellow dress that every little girl would love to come down the uh, double staircase to wear for their first prom. This weighs just about 35 pounds, so it kind of moves Belle as well as Belle trying to move it. This is one of the beast coats. If you could do a close-up on this, the beading on this is really amazing. This, this comes in somewhere around fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for the new coat. Um, because of the velvet and all of the beading, which is done by hand. But as we found out, an expensive coat does not a beast make. No point anymore if I can't love her. So, Roger, what is this first going on? Um, this is the, the glue that she's putting on that the prosthetic pieces are going to be stuck to. That's how they're stuck to my face. It feels kind of like Elmer's glue, but it's really a special adhesive that I don't know the name of. Prose, I think it's called. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, I'm learning. And the first thing to go on are the teeth. Yes, this is the chin piece. You find yourself getting into the character more as you get more made up? All I need is the teeth and I'm there. No, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's Yeah, it's kind of hard not to. I mean, as you see it, slowly go on and you start getting the weight of the boots and the clothing and stuff, it definitely... That'll kind of use for Tiffany, right? Yes. That will, they, that will stay there, you're confident through the whole performance? Hopefully. <laughs> it, it does need touching up, just extra glue. And yeah. I do have to, um, I have to shave closely and I usually sea breeze my face mm -hmm. so that uh, one time I shaved with aloe vera lotion and um, made my skin really slimy and it started to slide a little. They've really got it condensed to a, a pretty efficient process. That's thanks, thanks to these guys, the Beast Keepers. How fast does it yeah. all come off? It actually, when you see the show, it, I transform before your eyes. So how fast you see it? it? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to see the show. How many times, Roger, did you watch the animated feature? I saw the movie a long time ago and I've actually kind of made a point of not going back to really? see it. Yeah, because, um, I, I mean, I definitely have memories of it that I that I keep, but I don't want to, it's almost like I don't want to do, take too much right out of that in a way. Okay. There you go. That's Phase great. one is complete. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your half hour call, half hour. Thank see the you. change already. All the hair is human hair. So it's treated, you know, in the same way every, you know, every show his facial hair is washed and conditioned and set. Hey, Blinken. ZZ Top. <laughs> so that's the end of phase two. We have to put that, we have to put this on right now because the mic's going to be this way. So the microphones are right there. Yep, here's the actual microphone part. They're tiny. They're kind of wrapped up so that they don't... Get sweat or anything in them. He wears three, two transmitters in the back, and then we have a spare mic, a third mic, so if something happens, we can switch out. Now I get all the Arnold Schwarzenegger muscles. And of course the tail. The boots are really comfy because they're, they're built on top of sneakers. Actually, if you look carefully at the set, there's actually a uh, when Real I climb up, things. well, they have like little pieces of almost sandpaper oh, okay. that I kind of try to shoot for when I'm turning and stuff. So that I mean, they have good grips on this, but you know, kind of gives me a little more traction as I'm climbing around. These are these are based on my abs here. <laughs> you know, I sometimes try to take out a throat drops or something, and for a while I was like, ar, 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 you know, I couldn't quite get it. Getting better with it. Yeah. So how were you? <laughs> Train seal actually is what I was. <laughs> and they go a little past the. Uh, Past your fingertips. Past my fingertips, so I did have a habit of like reaching over to adjust the fan and sticking the fingers right in. <laughs> so I always have to be careful of that. And that's it! <laughs> give me a little piece. I am the master of this castle. <sighs> Preview. Sneak <Yeah>. <laughs>
and then like, <laughs> see, that was me. That was the beat. Ooh, scary. And love her. Let the world be done with me. As Beauty and the Beast travels across the country, you might be surprised at the local flavor of this Broadway production. We'll show you that coming up next. Bonjour. 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 The cast of Beauty and the Beast is made up of actors and actresses from around the country, and it includes four women who got their starts right here in the Great Lakes State. Meet Susan Owen and Carol Bentley, both from East Lansing. Susan is an understudy to the lead role of Belle and is part of the ensemble cast. She plays the character who has been transformed into a broom. From her theater start in East Lansing, Susan went on to the University of Michigan and then on to New York City. Her acting career last brought her back to the Wharton Center as part of the Phantom of the Opera production. Her last name is a familiar one in the world of Michigan Democratic politics. She's the daughter of two-time candidate for governor, Larry Owen. I always said, do what you love to do. You know, you've got to try to do your dream or you won't be happy. Susan's happiness now is rooted in coming back to her roots to show once again that she has made it. Yeah, or I'm, I'm doing it. I don't, I don't know what made it is quite yet. Um, but yeah, I guess in a way, made it, that's good. And, and it's nice to be able to go home and have that support of everyone and and truthfully my mother as well she teaches theater and taught theater so that was a lot where I started is with her and through her so it's always nice to not not prove it prove that it worked but to sort of say thank you Susan Owen cut her acting teeth in high school right alongside Carol Bentley Carol is part of the ensemble cast as well she plays center plate her stage career began with dance for the last 10 years Carol has been based in New York Beauty and the Beast is her first time in a national tour, and this will be her first time back home to perform in front of her family. Yes, I never specifically had a path figured out for myself. I just had a lot of guidance with people from the East Lansing and Lansing area who were very involved in the arts, um, who did and continue to have careers in New York and Los Angeles and all over the world. And um, they just recognized I, I guess, the, um, the desire within me as well, and encouraged me, and here I am. While Carol envisions many more years on the stage, whether as a plate or something else, her long-range plans point in another direction. I've always been attracted to the business end of the business mm -hmm. as well, and I, I find myself gravitating towards that. I look forward to the transition, whenever it may be. from Southfield, Michigan, is Erin Dilly, who plays the role of Belle. She says this is her first big break, and she's living up to the challenge. Erin's performance brings to life the Belle we've come to know and love in Disney's animated version of Beauty and the Beast. That's tremendous. That's what, that's what should happen, I hope. I mean, my, my parents have taken to introducing me to people as, she's the beauty. And I was like, no, ma, dad, say I'm Belle. Just, just introduce me as Belle. It's a little, we all have bad days. We don't want to be beauty every day of our lives. Whether it's beauty or Belle, Aaron has been looking forward to this Wharton Center engagement. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. I'm, you know, I can get home on every single day off. It's only an hour and a half from my home and go hang out with my parents and... And I, I will always miss, miss Michigan, especially now. I mean, it's, you know, the holiday season, and I miss the snow. Well, Erin, the snow is fresh, and fresh is a quality she finds challenging when it comes to delivering a quality show each and every night. And being in a national tour, it's by virtue of the fact that it's a transient 
group, you know what I mean? We're, we're, we're changing cities and locales every six weeks. We have a new opening night. We have a new group of people to play to. We have a new area of the country to discover. So that kind of just keeps everybody's lights on. It was anything but lights on when Barbara Marino began her career on Broadway 22 years ago. Oh, I oh you're going to love this story. The night of the 1977 New York City blackout. I was playing Anne in Shenandoah. It was my opening night. It was my Broadway debut. Just before I sang the big number that opens the second act, Freedom, all the lights went out. All the lights went out in New York City, and the stagehands held flashlights on us, and we sang Freedom to flashlights. <laughs> <laughs> Since then, Barbara has had an electrifying career. From her beginnings in southwest Michigan, she's performed on and off with the National Beauty and the Beast Tour for the past five years. Barbara Marino is part of the glue that holds this production together. She's Mrs. Potts. Haven't you got a nice spot of tea, sir? In a world, you must be two times. Oh, yes, please. Barbara is the eldest of seven children and says she's been a nurturer all her life, something she brings to this motherly role, a something that definitely connects with the audience. And to see adults and children just mesmerized, totally captured in the piece and to come out off afterwards and I've had little children run up and hug me afterwards and I just go gosh this may be their first experience with live theater so it's wonderful plus I get to sing the song the song <laughs> I get the song <laughs> We're glad you could be our guest for this special behind-the-scenes look at Beauty and the Beast from the Tampa Bay Performing Arts Center. Now is your chance to see this tale as old as time in East Lansing at the Wharton Center. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Andrews. Have a good night.